Guys, Scotty Two Hockey here, and an absolute must win for the Montreal Canadiens tonight against the Philadelphia Flyers. If the Habs were to lose this in regulation, Philadelphia would pull within one point of Montreal, same amount of games played. If Columbus were to win and Carolina were to win, Columbus goes up by six points, uh, or Columbus goes up by five points, and Carolina goes up by six points. With nine games remaining after this game, if they lose, to be down by five or six points with a team right behind you by one point, it's a tough spot to be, and realistically, it will be very hard to even get back into contention for that wild card spot, uh, especially if Columbus went down to win or one or two after it. Uh, the Habs really, really need to win this game. If they win this game, they pull within one point to Columbus if they lose tonight. Even if Columbus did win, they'd still at least be within three-point reach. They play Columbus again, so if they could win that game, I'm sure they could make up the point and steal that second wild card spot. But this game is a crucial game. They need to win this game, and they need to win their next game against the New York Islanders, and they need to beat Columbus. They absolutely need these wins. This is not the time of the year to start losing. If the Habs miss the playoffs this year, the story of the Habs uh, season will be death by power play and death by inconsistency. Because leading up to the All-Star break, they were a very consistent team. You could depend on them to rattle off three or four wins if they lost one or two. They had some good games. They were pretty much scoring at will. They were putting up five goals against Tampa. They were beating Detroit 8-1, eight 8-2, to one, eight to two, whatever it was. They were uh, beating teams big, and they were playing well. And games when the other teams were swarming and getting a lot of goals, they could fight back. They had a lot of fight. And since the All-Star break, I just really haven't seen it. They got off to a rough start, losing to New Jersey right away, and then they rattled off a few wins, and Jonathan Drew went on a big game against Winnipeg, so it was looking like it was going to be okay. They were going to get into the wild card spot and stay there. Well, they were already in there, but they were going to stay in that wild card spot. But since then, since Drew Ann's had that big game, it's been nothing but downhill for Drew Ann and for the team. I'm not singling out Drew Ann, but he only has four points in the past 16 games, and they all came in one game. Anyways, I'm going to get off the subject to Drew Ann because there are other, pl are other players that are struggling. You cannot put it all on him. Brett Kulak was terrible last game, so I would not be surprised if he's a healthy scratch tonight. I'm not sure. I never checked the lines yet. Anyways, let's get into the numbers, guys. As for Philly, they're, they're not having the season they wanted, I don't say, but they are red hot now down the stretch. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. Montreal's just barely out of it. Philly's three points behind Montreal, so I don't realistically see them make it, but if they win this game, it goes a long way for them. Their record is 35-29-8. They have 78 points. They're currently sixth in the Metro Division. Uh, their last three games, their last five games, they're three one and one. Their last game, they won two to one over division rivals Pittsburgh Penguins. Their power play is sixteen point three percent. Obviously, much better than Montreal's, even though it's not a great power play. Twenty fourth in the league, that's good for. Their penalty kill is seventy eight point five percent. That's good for 25th in the league. Their goals for is a solid 222. That's good for 12th in the league. And uh, their goals against is 241. That's good for 25th in the league. But their goals against would have been a lot lower if they had to get Carter Hart up, if they had to call Carter Hart up before it, and they had to sign Brian Elliott before it. Because before Brian Elliott and Carter Hart came along, it was uh, pretty rough for Philly this year in goaltending. The story of Philly was they can score, they just can't stop pucks. Their defense could use a bit of work too, and them losing Wade Simmons at the trade deadline definitely don't help. Um, as for the leading scorers, uh, their leading scorer of, is no surprise to anybody, Claude Giroux. 72 games played, 20 goals, 57 assists, 77 points, a plus 18. On 207 shots this season, he has a 9.7 shooting percentage. As for the second leading scorer, Gatorier, 70 games played, 29 goals, 40 assists, 69 points, plus 14, 195 shots, and 14.9 shooting percentage. Voracek is their third leading scorer, 68 games played, 19 goals, 43 assists, 62 points, and a minus 8 for Voracek. As for Montreal, or actually, no, I forgot to mention Philadelphia's goalies. Philadelphia's have three goalies listed. Carter Hart, 24 games played, 14-9-0, zero shutouts, 2.76 goals against, and a .918 save percentage. Great numbers for the rookie. I would expect to see Brian Elliott next tonight. Elliott, 24 games played, 11-9-1, zero shutouts, 2.79 goals against, and a .912 save percentage. The third goalie hasn't played a lot yet. Who knows? You could see him. I don't know what's on the go. I don't follow Philly like that, so I don't know what's on the go with Talbot. His, in two games played, he didn't start both of them. One of them he went in. They already had the last, so it doesn't count as the last game. In two games played, he's 1-0-0. He has zero shutouts, and this season he has a 2.58 goals against and a .918 save percentage. Um, 
Now, as for Montreal, their record this year, they haven't won a game in their past three games. 37, 28, and 7, or is it two in a row they lost? They won the Detroit one. I believe they lost two, maybe three in a row. I can't exactly remember off the top of my head. They're 37, 28, and 7. They have 81 points. That's good for, they have 81 points. That's good for fourth in the Atlantic Division. Their last five games, they're abysmal, 1-4-0, so they need to pick it up. This is the wrong time of the year to go on to 1-4-0 in your last five record. It's just, it's just not a good look, and it's just something that Habs fans, whether or not they miss the playoffs, if they had to miss it going down a little bit down the stretch and not be so close and just barely miss it, like if they do, Habs fans are going to hear a lot of, oh, your team are chokers, oh, Price sucked down the stretch, oh, Domi couldn't hold it together. It's just going to be a lot of unnecessary negativity that the team don't need. If you're going to miss, you're going to miss, but to miss just barely by the skin of your teeth like that, it's just brutal as a fan. I do not want to see it myself. Uh, their last game, of course, they lost. They got shut out in a beautiful performance by Corey Crawford. He kills Montreal in Montreal. Uh, the last game, they lost 2 to nothing to Chicago Blackhawks. Their power play is officially under 12%. 31st in the league and horrible. They're almost down to 10% on the year. 11.9 is their power play. 31st in the league. Their penalty kill is 80.7%. Good for 15th in the league. They've been picking up a lot on the penalty kill. Uh, their goals for is 212. That's 17th in the league. Their goals against is 212. That's good for 12th in the league. And their goals against is pretty good compared to their goals for, even though they're exactly the same. Uh, Carey Price, 57 games played, 29 wins, 22 losses, 5 overtime losses, 2.57 goals against, 0.915 save, percent, save percentage, and 3 shutouts on the year. Excuse me, guys. My, my voice is getting really uh, hoarse here. I don't have a drink on hand. I got kind of a sore throat. And I don't feel like pausing the video because I got what I wanted to say in my head. And I... Don't want to lose it. So if I sound a bit hoarse, I'm sorry. Um, as for Montreal, their scoring leaders this year have been what they've been the past month and a half, two months. Drouin really needs to pick it up. Uh, Domi, 72 games played, 24 goals, 38 assists, go for 62 points, a plus 12 on the year, 173 shots, and he has a 13.9 shooting percentage on that 173 shots. Thomas Tatar, 70 games played, 22 goals, 28 assists, 50 points, a plus 17, 176 shots, 12.5% shooting. Uh, as for Tatar, it would be good to see him pick it up lately. Yes, he's had some opportunities. Yes, he's had some chances to score, but he isn't capitalizing on him. He had a breakaway last game. He had a nice shot from the net. He isn't scoring like he was in the beginning of the season. I'm not expecting Tatar to put up 30, 40 goals in a season, but if he could get a little bit hot down the stretch, score three or four more for the Habs, possibly get on the power play and get them a power play goal, it would be a big help because guys like Tatar, Kakniemi, Domi, Deneau, these are the guys you need to step up like they were earlier in the season. Domi has been pretty good consistently with the points, but it would be good to see him hot like he was earlier in the season. As for Tatar, 176 shots, he has a 12.5 shooting percentage on that. Drew Ang, 71 games played, 17 goals, 33 assists, 50 points, a minus 4, 177 shots, he has a 9.6 shooting percentage. I liked what I've seen from Drew Ang the past two games, so I don't have any complaints for Drew Ang as of lately. As for tonight, I'm predicting a good win for the Habs. I think it's going to be a very close game. These are two hungry teams. I don't see it going into overtime. I see the Habs winning 5-3, to three, and it's going to have to come down to an empty netter to seal it. I see them being up 4-3 to three in the third period. It's going to come down to the last two or three minutes. Phillies should pull their goalie. This is what I see. This is just my prediction for tonight's game. Philly's probably going to pull their goalie, and it's going to come down to somebody like Yoel Armia or Andrew Shire or Philip Deneau getting a big empty net goal. That's what I'm hoping for tonight. I'm expecting Price to have a solid game. He had a solid game last game after he was honored in Montreal, and he still lost, so I'm sure he wants to bounce back. It wasn't his best game as far as numbers was, but he did make some quality saves. But I'm sure he would like to have that game back, being outshined by Crawford on his big night in Montreal. I'm sure Price wants to make up for that. So I expect uh, Philly not to get much on him. They, they probably will get 35 shots on tonight, but I still expect Price to stop at least uh, 32 of them. And I, I expect a 5-3 win for the Montreal Canadiens, and Philly will have to work hard for their goals tonight. I feel the defense and Price is going to want to make up for the blunder of last game. And the team just couldn't score last game. The scoring depth has dropped off. So like I said, we need guys like Kakanyemi. We need guys like Shaw. We need to know Tara Domi. We need this, the go-to guys to step up. And I know they can do it. I have faith in this team. So my prediction for tonight is a 5-3 to three win for the Montreal Canadiens. Anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring that bell. 
Feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think of tonight's game. And is it a must win in your mind? If the Habs lose tonight's game, are they out of the playoffs? That's my question of the day, question of the week. The one, I'm wondering why people's stats aren't. It's because if they lose tonight, uh, realistically, I do not see them getting back in. I will hold out hope. I won't say they're out of it. I will try and stay positive the best I can. But realistically, I do not see them getting back in if they win tonight. Uh, to be five points behind, or if they lose tonight, excuse me, to be five points behind Columbus, or even three points points with nine games left is brutal, but if Columbus wins and Montreal loses, to, to just it's just brutal. And even if Carolina did lose tonight uh, and Montreal won, yes, they'd make a bit of ground on Carolina. Carolina still has a game in hand, so Habs really need to make up ground. I feel Carolina's pretty much in there. They're, they're good. They got a uh, four-point lead on the Habs now. Three, uh, They have a four-point lead on the Habs now, if I'm not mistaken, with a game in hand, and they're... Uh, Seven points up on Philly, the closest team to him besides the Habs. So, unless they really fall off and Montreal really picks it up or Philly really picks it up, it's looking really good for the bunch of jerks. They're probably going to get into the playoffs. It's down to Montreal and Columbus in my mind. If Philly wins tonight, they're right in it too. But it's a lot of ground for them to make up with a young goalie. And uh, Brian Elliott isn't exactly the most reliable goalie in the world. In my mind, it's down to Columbus and Montreal for that second wildcard spot. And I really, really hope they can get it. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. I hope you enjoyed the game tonight and look forward to my recap after the game. I have a Nick Suzuki video coming up soon where he's in the playoffs for the OHL. I have a Caden Premu video coming up soon and I will get to my Ryan Paling video coming up soon too. I'm sure he'll be signing once the NCAA playoffs are over. Anyways, guys, this is Mr. Average Hockey Fan over and out. Enjoy the game. Have a great night, folks.